Get ready to get romantic, but not in a good way. Today we're going to discuss the five romance cliches that I hate the most. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. Whether you like it or not, romance is a big part of storytelling. Sometimes stories are entirely built around romance, while other times you might incorporate romantic subplots in order to spice things up. Either way, romance is very popular, and unfortunately when things get popular, they tend to spawn a bunch of of annoying cliches. And that brings us to today's video. I'm going to list out five cliches that I hate, I'll explain why they suck, and I'll give you an example of each. And here's your spoiler warning for today. All of the movies I'll be discussing today contain heavy spoilers. First cliche that I hate is tacked on romance. And this is a romantic subplot that feels forced and unnecessary. Oftentimes you'll see these in thrillers or sci-fi or action heavy stories. The romance will be there, but it won't feel like a natural fit for the story. And that's possibly because it was included as an afterthought. And you might get the feeling the characters are hooking up just because they're the two main characters or just because they're both single and good looking rather than because there's an actual meaningful purpose to the romance. And these subplots, they tend to be shallow, uninspired, or predictable. They may feel rushed, they may add unnecessary scenes to the story, and they may distract from the main story or disrupt its pacing and tone. For an example, let's look at Jurassic World. If you remember, the main character Claire is established as a workaholic who has lost touch with her family. When her nephews visit the park, she passes them off to another employee and she gets right back to work. Then all hell breaks loose and when her nephews find themselves in danger, Claire has to rescue them. And that's a perfectly good way to challenge her to grow as a character, but because Jurassic World is a summer blockbuster, they had to include a romantic subplot as well. And this one involves the other main character, Owen, who trains raptors, and once went on a date with Claire. And that's the extent of their history together. There's not a whole lot going on between them, but before long, they're locking lips and getting pegged as girlfriend and boyfriend. And the problem here is that the whole thing feels shallow and rushed, and it happens within a chaotic story where other more pressing things are going on. There's danger and desperation everywhere, and I believe the story would have been better off if Claire and Owen had simply developed a mutual respect for each other rather than shooting off romantic fireworks. Just let the characters grow and and save the romance for the sequels. Second cliche that I hate is when miscommunication causes a breakup. And this is when a couple breaks up because one side misinterprets something about the other. And it's really annoying because in most cases the breakup could have easily been prevented if the characters would just talk and get their facts straight. And the cliche is lazy and contrived, it exists just to force the plot into breakup territory, and it's often a wasted opportunity. And the thing is, instead of resorting to using a miscommunication, you're better off having characters break up over something more impactful, like a flaw or a habit or something like that. For an example, let's look at Hitch. And in this movie, the main character Hitch works as a professional date doctor. He makes his living by teaching awkward men how to be romantic, and he limits his services to well-meaning guys. In other words, he refuses to coach people who have bad intentions. Early on, Hitch himself falls for a journalist named Sarah, and he eventually invites her to have dinner at his apartment. But before their big night, Sarah learns that a friend of hers has been taken advantage of by a scumbag who claims to have hired Hitch. Hitch. In reality, Hitch refused to help the guy at all, but Sarah believes otherwise. This leads to a confrontation where she rips him for working as a date doctor, and then instead of trying to calm her down so that he can explain himself, he decides to throw salad at her. And all the vegetables and miscommunication leads to a breakup, as well as a nasty article about him in the newspaper. Now what's frustrating is that this fight scene could have been an opportunity for them to get their story straight, and then she could have chosen to break up with him for a more legitimate reason. For example, Maybe she recognizes that he didn't do anything wrong, but she can't bring herself to respect his line of work. Then she leaves him, and then he has to reinvent himself in some way in order to win her back. And this is, of course, just one possibility, but the important thing to remember here is that miscommunication is usually a weak plot device. If you have your characters breaking up, give them a more legitimate reason to do so. Third cliche that I hate, mutual breakups. And this is when two characters agree to break up at the same time, usually without facing any conflict or consequences. And it's a problem because it's too easy and it lacks emotional impact. Romantic stories and subplots are supposed to explore powerful emotions, but mutual breakups typically send characters off in different directions without an adequate emotional payoff. 
and it's a missed opportunity for character growth. Instead of having characters learn from their mistakes and try to reinvent themselves, mutual breakups can let characters off easy. And one last thing to consider here, mutual breakups often feel unrealistic and manipulative. It's almost like the writer is trying to protect their character from looking bad, so rather than having the character initiate a harmful breakup, there's this cop-out where everything works out perfectly and nobody gets hurt. For an example, let's look at You've Got Mail. And in this movie, Joe Fox and Kathleen Kelly become internet pen pals and fall in love through email. Unfortunately, however, they're both dating other people in real life. Joe has a girlfriend he can't stand, and Kathleen has a positive yet lukewarm relationship with her journalist boyfriend, Frank. Throughout the story, Kathleen hides her online romance from Frank, and he meanwhile develops feelings for someone else. Then, toward the end of the movie, Frank confesses to Kathleen that he doesn't love her, and she immediately agrees with him, and the two have a good old laugh about it. No feelings are harmed, no complaints are made, and the story cruises along towards its conclusion. Now, the problem I have with this mutual breakup is that, first of all, it's too good to be true. They've been going out for some time, they've invested in each other's lives, and yet they part ways like they just met 20 minutes ago. And the other problem I have with it is that their breakup makes the story feel too safe. It feels like a non-event, and it diminishes the impact of Kathleen going after her pen pal. Now, if she had instead taken a risk and ended a serious relationship in order to pursue a mysterious lover, that would have had a major impact. But what we get in the actual story is more like, yeah, whatever, Frank's gone and she has nothing to lose, so she might as well meet up with the guy who sends her these emails. Fourth cliche that I hate is when the main characters get saved by the sidekicks. And this is when a couple breaks up, and instead of one side making a passionate effort to restore the relationship, the side characters scheme to get the couple back together. And I hate it because it robs the main characters of agency, meaning that they're not taking charge of their situation. And in the later stages of a story, you want characters to be fighting for what they want. And another problem here is that it diminishes the impact of the couple getting back together. Since someone else did the hard work, the reunion doesn't feel earned. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that it's totally fine if a sidekick encourages the main character to get back in the game. The problem is when the sidekick does all the heavy lifting. For an example, let's look at the movie failure to launch. And in this movie, the main character, Trip, is a 35-year-old man living at home with his parents, and they want him to move out. But instead of asking him to find an apartment or just throwing him out of the house, they hire a woman named Paula to intervene. And Paula's job is to make Trip fall for her and then break his heart, which, according to this movie's wacky logic, will motivate him to become independent and move out. Anyway, the two start dating, and Paula manipulates him into feeling connected to her, and along the way, she unexpectedly develops genuine feelings for him. But just when things are looking bright, one of Trip's friends learns the truth about her occupation, and he passes along the bad news. Not surprisingly, Trip gets upset when he learns that his parents hired Paula to be his pretend girlfriend. He breaks up with her, then he moves out and starts living on a boat. Though he eventually forgives his parents, he wants nothing to do with Paula. She, meanwhile, decides to quit her job, move out of her roommate's apartment, and live with her parents in another town. But right before she leaves, all the supporting characters get together and launch a plan to trap the two lovers in a room together. And this allows Paula to spill out her feelings until a tied-up trip agrees to live happily ever after with her. Now, obviously, this movie is a mess, but the problem I want to focus on is how all the sidekicks band together in order to get the couple reunited. Even for a comedy, this is just way too ridiculous, and it makes Paula look like someone who isn't willing to fight for what she wants. She should be chasing down Trip and trying to win him back. Instead, the supporting cast makes the decision for her, and the ending ends up sucking as a result. And the fifth cliche that I hate is unearned or undeserved romance. And this is when two characters get together without proper buildup. And it's a problem because it can strain the story's believability or it can just come off feeling wrong. And there can be many reasons why a romance feels unearned, but some of the more common ones include when you're rushing character development, or you're giving characters superficial motives for being with each other, or you're forcing romantic moments when platonic ones are more appropriate. For an example, let's look at the Star Wars sequel trilogy, specifically the romance between Rey and Kylo Ren. Now, these two develop a unique relationship over the course of the trilogy. They're powerful Force users, and they find themselves as clear enemies in Episode 7. Then Rey starts to understand Kylo in Episode 8, and then finally they join each other to defeat Palpatine after he somehow returns in Episode 9. Now, throughout the entire trilogy, Rey stands firmly on the side of good, while Kylo battles temptation to abandon the dark side and return to the light. 
Despite his internal struggles, however, he murders many people across three movies before finally joining Rey and helping her defeat the Emperor. Then, when Rey dies during the final confrontation, Kylo uses the Force to resurrect her, sacrificing his own energy in the process. It's an act of redemption, but then things get taken way too far when Rey kisses him hard on the mouth afterwards. And I gotta tell you, when I saw this in theaters, I flinched like a truck had run over my foot. It was just such a jarring event. And the reason why is because Kylo didn't earn a romantic moment like this. He definitely earned a thank you, or a pat on the shoulder, or maybe a hug, but I just can't buy the idea of a traditional hero like Rey kissing someone who murdered her mentor, nearly killed her best friend, then led attacks that slaughtered countless members of her group, and then tried to kill her and everyone she cared about. And I get that the movies like to pretend that Kylo Ren and Ben Solo are two separate people, but that doesn't excuse all the bad things he did. Correcting one's mistakes and seeking redemption is one thing, but being immediately rewarded rewarded for it with romantic love, it just doesn't ring true. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what romance cliche do you hate the most? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books and be sure to leave reviews on Amazon. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he can't put it down till he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. And as always, remember to keep on writing.